Hello, and welcome back to yet another Wet Spotlight, our feature where we take a closer look at one of the many wonderful species that we do carry in-house. This go-around, we'll be looking at the graceful rasbora, uh, scientific name, Trigonopoma gracile. Uh, it's a wonderful little rasbora. It's in the order Cypriniformes, the minnows, for lack of a more concrete, conclusive term in the family Danionidae, uh, obviously includes Danios, who could have figured as well. Uh, the etymology behind this very peaceful little species is trigonos, meaning triangular, and pomo, meaning lid, uh, which refers to, in conjunction, the triangular shape of the opercle, which is its gill plate. Uh, gracile is meaning slender or thin, which presumably refers to the caudal peduncle, that kind of fleshy part right before the tail fin, uh, which is a lot more slender than many other Rasbora species, even some close relatives. This is just a beautiful little fish that you unfortunately don't see all that often. Here they're feeding on some live brine shrimp that we put in the tank, kind of draw that feeding response. I really, really like these guys. Uh, just that beautiful gold hue. I like fish where there's something that kind of pops and draws you to it as opposed to it just being, you know, all almost gaudily colored or anything else going on. Whether it's in clear water, like right now, or black water, these guys really shine. This species actually does have a few color forms depending on their exact collection location. Uh, for example, some exhibit more intense pigmentation in the fins or an additional reddish lateral stripe along the body. Uh, in general, the ones that we do tend to get here, they are wild caught, uh, tend to be a really nice kind of lovely bronze or gold coloration and also have a little bit of that black stripe under it stretching from uh, the tip of the nose to the base of the tail. Uh, I'm probably making this up, but I do believe that at one point taxonomically, I think these were a little confused with the redline rasbora, very similarly behaving species, kind of looking species. Uh, with a red stripe, I think at some point they were considered very close or maybe population variants, but like I said, I'm probably just blowing smoke. I'm not exactly positive on that one. Uh, as you can see here, uh, down here at the bottom left, females are going to be a little thicker bodied, a little larger than males. Uh, males will be just a little slimmer and be a little bit more intensely colored, but as you can see in this little grouping, they're quite beautiful. And just to kind of hone in on that, just that wonderful tight shoaling ability. Uh, one thing that I often hear is, what can I get fish-wise that has that nice tight school even once they settle into the tank? And oftentimes it's rummy nose tetras or ember tetras form a pretty good cluster, whereas some other fish will uh, not necessarily do that over time. They'll kind of realize that it's safe in the tank and spread out a little bit. With these, I found that they do pretty much have that nice tight kind of balling up of that group, which is just really nice. And you can see they're doing it here. We just saw a clip of them uh, all moving at once, which is just really nice to see. Uh, Trigonopoma gracile is fairly widely distributed, kind of explains the uh, different populations. Uh, throughout the Malaysian Peninsula, they're found in Singapore and the greater Sunda Islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Uh, the populations found in Singapore may have been extirpated. They might not quite be there anymore. We're not sure. But they've also been found on the Malaysian Peninsula in the states of, and here's where I butcher them, Selangor, Terengganu, Johor, and probably a few other areas that have that kind of uh, peaty swamp forest area. There's a couple really nice YouTube channels that hopefully we can figure out a way to link uh, that actually have these in their native habitat, I believe, in Borneo. They're just killer to see. Hair algae everywhere. Uh, these guys are swimming through it. They're picking on it. Just really, really cool to see these guys just swim through those really nice, dark, peaty waters. Uh, in Sumatra, they've been recorded in the Batanghari River system and on the Tuna Besar, again, probably butchering these, which is one of the most northern islands in Indonesia and part of the uh, Riau Islands province, where you will see just a eh, few other fish here and there. I believe there's some stipodons from the Riau Islands that are very neat. 
Uh, in Borneo, the majority of the collections are in the Kapuas River Basin in the Indonesian provinces of West and Central Kalimantan, which is where a lot of aquarium fish from those same Indonesian black waters will be found in. Uh, they're also known to inhabit Sarawak. Sarawak rasboras obviously come from there, Rasbora sarawakensis. In these habitats, the darker ones, that's where everything else kind of fades away and we're left with that nice gold stripe. Uh, everything else just kind of helps them blend in. It's very attractive. Uh, again, that's what I was hearkening to earlier where it's everything else fades away in black water. That just nice stripe, probably for their own uh, schooling communication. In these areas, there is a dense rainforest canopy. There's not a lot of light penetrating the water surface. There's tree branches, there's decaying leaves, which means that if we're aiming to recreate that in the aquarium, we would probably want to have dimmer lighting, maybe something suspended, something just not quite as powerful, uh, maybe even some floating plants up at the top, especially if it's more still. To these blackwater habitats, companion animals like this lovely celibus rainbow up top would be a good fit. They are known to sympatrically occur with Crossochylus oblongus, the Siamese algae eater, Cryptopterus biseris, a species of glass catfish, very similar to our Cryptopterus vitreolus from Thailand, Rasbora trilineata, the scissor tail rasbora, and Pangeo semisincta, the humble yet lovely coolie loach, chocolate grami species such as Spherichthys volanti, the valent chocolate grami, or Spherichthys osraminoides, the standard chocolate grami make excellent centerpiece as well. And for those that do want to recreate, you know, their more clear water habitat, have a bit more plant going on, many species like Cryptocorn or Blixa or Barclaya species, Eleocharis, dwarf hair grasses, Utricularia or Limnophila are found in their native range and would be a good fit for them as well to help them feel comfortable. a heavily planted environment for the more white water aspect is always appreciated so long as you use something you know, a little similar. Crypts, Blixa, Barclaya, Heliochorus, things like that. Of course, like many fish, we found that they do best over a darker substrate, say ADA aqua soil or Seachem's darker fluorite substrates, just to really get that color pop, as well as adding something like dried leaf litter, water lettuce, salvinia, something to really make them feel at home. In the wild, these guys are pretty adaptable, obviously large range, are found in a pretty decent spread of temperatures or pHs. They can tolerate temperatures as cool as 70 and pHs as low as 3, uh, but of course you can also keep them about as high a pH as 7.5, 7.6, with a temperature as high as about 80 degrees. I'd strongly recommend keeping them in a group of at least 6 to 8 in a 10 to 15 gallon tank, although as you can see here they do look a lot better in a larger group and if you're looking to set up a community with a nice big group, 20 to 40 gallons would be more than plenty for these. They are, as I mentioned, incredibly peaceful. They top out at about 2 inches and they're a little slow and gentle so they're a really good fit for a lot more laid back communities. Uh, similar size cyprinids, small loaches, general antibantids are always going to be good fits so long as the tank chemistry is A-OK, -okay, all good for everyone involved, as well as things like tetras or pencil fish or dwarf cichlids would be fine with these as well. Larger group, of course, you won't regret as you can see by this video. Just make sure not to keep it with larger, particularly boisterous tank mates like Big Daniels or Barbs as they may get outcompeted for food. In the wild, as you saw, these are micro predators. They would eat small crustaceans or worms or zooplankton, but in captivity, they eat a pretty wide range of foods like the brine shrimp that you saw, or something like bloodworms or daphnia, or even small flakes and pellets. They're a little slow moving, but not particularly fuzzy.
as always, thank you for tuning in and joining us for another Wet Spotlight. As always, all the fish featured can be found either here in store at the Wet Spot or online at our stock list at wetspottropicalfish.com. Thanks again for viewing and happy fish keeping. Thank you.